today in ethics class we will take a supreme court judgment very recent supreme court judgment and try to find out what kind of principles they have followed in this judgment if you carefully understand or if you can spend little more time on my previous videos it will be better because this video is a continuation of previous videos and in all my lectures i will it will be little overdose of theory uh, it is no alternative except you have to study them because the standards that are created for ias officers is very high therefore without knowing these philosophical principles of which ethics is a part of it it will be difficult for us without much ado we will go into the lecture and let us see the lecture here now the supreme court of india is known for its for its judicial acumen and the the pronouncements of supreme court of india is studied across the world and there are excellent jurists in our country like we justice v r krishnayer about whom we will study more during our discussion on ethics oh oh now supreme court of india on monday 2nd may 2020 222 upheld the right of an individual against forcible vaccination now i want you to think on this for example if people are what people are telling that i will not get vaccinated what happens is he may get covid and in turn he may spread to others in the community in the process entire community may get affected by it if you are coercing a person if you are trying to tell a person you should get vaccinated that means his individual right is affected now in many state governments union territories they told that if you don't get vaccinated you will not be given free rations and you cannot move from one place to other even in tamil nadu you have seen people are not able to move from one place to the other place unless he produces a certificate now what is the supreme court judgment so oh, one part we will see in this the landmark judgments of supreme court of india provide us an opportunity to study some of the ethical issues and enhance our ability to think here it will be on practice of ethics as well as we study the theoretical aspects relating to ethics we will just us or uh, discuss on the judgment and you can definitely get the complete information on various 
judgments of Supreme Court in the following website and you can also get it from indiankanun.org and here I have used the Hindu the best newspaper for you to have a complete understanding the Hindu is the best uh, source of course there are other sources but I have used this as it is very authentic now uh, how the judge have accepted the honorable judge Nageswara sir have accepted the arguments first is if you are forcibly vaccinating a person his individual right is denied number two when you are not giving him a welfare schemes again you are curtailing his liberty now on the other hand if you don't vaccinate it he is likely to spread the disease he has taken one very important scientific conclusion which said that even if you are vaccinated you will be spreading the disease even if you are vaccinated you will be spreading the disease and the probability of spread, spreading a disease by an unvaccinated person and a vaccinated person is same therefore based on the scientific aspect as well as he mentioned commutarian approach today we are going to see what is commutarian approach and who are all the people who authored and tomorrow we are going to do in-depth understanding of why French Revolution have come why people who are who support workers are called as left-wing and people who support or the kings or the government or the capitalists are generally classified as right-wing why you need to answer these questions we will answer these questions and we will go into the French Revolution which has taken place in 17th century which has changed the world the revolution also one important thing you should understand is the changes will be incremental changes incremental changes means small 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 changes on the other hand you may have a revolutionary sudden changes therefore there can be evolutionary changes which you cannot observe very small a small deltas will be added every every day so that you will see the changes over a period of time rather than sudden changes in the case of revolutionary changes there is a sudden change what are sudden changes how it happened how the how the thinking has happened over a period of time you have to understand these things then only you will be able to answer all the questions you will be able to write your paper on ethics now the first thing is from way back in 5th century BC and from Buddhist traditions and Greek traditions the first question that philosophers would like to answer is every day you will be deciding to do certain tasks and not to do certain tasks similarly governments do certain tasks and may not undertake certain tasks now let us take an individual a person how he should act if he is acting randomly then 
the society will not have the society i will not see everybody is acting see for example i am coming to the class i expect that the buses will be functioning i expect that the auto man will come i expect that when i come here my classes will be there on the other hand everybody acts in a random fashion then you can't achieve anything in this world for example if you try to fight with one chimpanzee fight with one chimpanzee under no circumstances any human being can win over a chimpanzee because it is very powerful animal on the other hand if you have good number of people who think and act in a same way against a group of chimpanzees the people will win because chimpanzees will not be able to act in a way as human beings can act the human beings can join together and someone do one task someone do another task this entire social system you work out for a human being may not be able to be followed by a chimpanzee but it does not mean that chimpanzees have no social instinct we will see all those things later therefore these questions are answered by different philosophers at different point of a time and these things are needed for you in order to be a uh, in order to be a decision maker of excellence in fact you as an ias officer you as a human being is expected to make decisions but what is the right decision let us go to these aspects step by step now in the last class i was talking about law and there is something known as eternal law see the eternal law is the mind of god and humans cannot know so for example sitting here in an institute of management i may not be knowing what god thinks about everyone contained in it are the laws which govern the universe and control the life cycle of everything in existence although humans cannot fully know the eternal law they can occasionally glimpse reflections of it uh, by natural for example if there is a lot of violations of violations of uh, environment you know that we are going for a natural disaster therefore this eternal law is something which uh, which was in the thought process of uh, greek philosophers and after that we had many philosophers working on it the next one is divine law divine law is the law of god revealed to people through the bible which christians call it as word of god jesus christ the son of god also brought divine law with him and the teachings of christ conveyed divine law to the people now this is therefore this divinity or the divine law is followed across the world therefore kings why do they govern over the world is because by divine law they are supposed to rule people therefore this is a small set of people they ruling a light <clears throat> the king and next is clergy clergy are the people who are generally the priests you find in catholic church or the 
mullahs you will find in islamic culture and most of the other regions the clergy and the clergy is supposed to be a mediation between god and the people and the third therefore these are all in france they are known as estates even today we use the same word estates therefore the king next is clergy and the bottom is filled with the working class or 98% of the people will be in this lower class now based on divine law they will be ruling the for most of the most of the kingdoms are basically derived from the divine laws the next law is natural law the everyone has a natural sense that good is to be done and evil to be avoided you may be asking what is this what exactly is who is evil oh uh, is what directs our conscious and if applied with the reason to a situation will lead to a right outcome i want you to carefully observe this statement that it is what directs our conscious and if applied with the reason therefore human beings inherently are intelligent and they have reason and they apply for it so this is known as natural law and finally human law uh, the human law is govern our lives from legal system at one end right down to notice saying wet paint do not touch or in our india we always keep to left therefore you don't go it on right i think you will understand see he is going all always on the left is it good no it is a law it is a convenience that you have created so that everybody will follow the rules so that you will you will have certainty in your life that is human law therefore you have these four laws that generally govern the human behavior on the other hand if you are a if you are somebody in a forest in yes. 40000 years ago there is no laws to govern them if there is no laws to govern them then people will not follow anything therefore there is a need for a law but what law to follow how to decide what is the right thing now i will remind you about the utilitarianism which i have studied in the last three classes where you have a you are going in a train and you have five people working on the track and on the right side you go you have one person and you have to take any one of the things and definitely you will take kill the one person five used to one philosophy we have discussed much in the last class but here utilitarianism means it depends on the context for example let me give you an example therefore smoking is bad for health alcohol drinking is bad for health but government across the world permitting smoking as well as drinking alcohol is permitting people to do that provided they pay the taxes so what is the principle used there it is the principle of utilitarianism maximum good to maximum people then go ahead and you do that now this kind of an utilitarian principle which was invoked by a 
cigarette company in Czechoslovakia, tobacco company, it told that if you ban tobacco, you will not have growth of hospitals. You will not have growth of doctors. And you have to pay more pension because people will not die very easily. A surprising thing. But still, it is a principle of utilitarianism. Now, what is opposite of utilitarianism? It is given by Immanuel Kant. And he used the word categorical imperatives. He is a German philosopher. And even I was finding it difficult. No, why did he use this really horrendous word? Categorical imperatives. Yenake Purila. Sorry, the Purinjikre Sametelada. I thought I can explain to you more clearly the categorical imperatives. Now, age of enlightenment. So, for example, up to 16th and 17th century, people were just accepting things as God-given. Therefore, the kings, the clergy, and the large amount of artisans, small traders, 98% of the people will be at the farmers, at the bottom of the pyramid, which we will see in the tomorrow's class, where I will explain to you the French Revolution. Now, in 16th century, it is also known as the age of entitlement, I mean, enlightenment. Then, you found that there are good number of intellectuals and People from working classes like artisans, farmers, and they all joined together. They started questioning this divine entitlement. Therefore, the kings were collecting money from the peasants, money from the farmers, money from the artisans by way of taxes. The clergy, the religion, they were collecting taxes. Remember, the church collects tax from people. And the taxes are painful for the working class to pay for it, especially during the times of, times of uh, serious times like famine or pandemic. Therefore, in 1784, he has written a book known as What is Entitlement? It is an essay. Therefore, we should understand how essays have influenced the world of thinking. That is the reason why you are asked to write essays. And this was published in 1784. He found that slowly people were going away from religion, Catholic religion, and people were questioning and you have Protestants, and there was a growing secularism. Immanuel Kant welcomed the declining belief in Christianity. He was happy that the belief in Christianity, blind belief in Christianity is coming down. But at the same time, he was also alarmed by it. So Kant, Immanuel Kant was not a very rich man. And he only at the age of 50, he became a professor. And it took a long time for him to settle. But this does not mean that it has influenced his thinking process. I have just given you as a matter of fact about Immanuel Kant. He was a pessimist about human character. Therefore, 
he believed that human beings are by nature intensively prone to corruption violence and all which may be true to a certain extent if you if you don't constrain a person not to do certain things something like you will find in some of the extreme violence towards other human beings as you find in find in africa we will discuss about liberia uh probably we will find about liberia exactly before it was the first country to be liberated but today it is one of the most chaotic countries and violent countries in the world and many countries like burundi congo which had independence similar to india by same time that we were getting independence they also got independence but they all perished but we as an indians we survived if you look at the reason for india as an as a as a country survival in 1947 many of the englishmen who worked in india for quite a long time they told that it is not a country it is a continent that means people are extremely different a person in punjab is not same as person in madras therefore they told that it will not be together for quite a long time but they proved to be wrong it is because the founding fathers of our country india gandhi ji what happened is he took people across the spectrum into the first ministry for example pandit jawaharlal nehru who is a congressman have picked up dinadayal upadhyay who got a right wing ideas he he has also taken a very radical leader b r ambedkar sir who is an architect of our constitution as a law minister there you will see a spectrum of leaders in fact the first finance minister happens to be shanmugam chetty this person was a loyalist to the english rulers he got his own philosophy why he supported them but still after independence he was taken as a finance minister therefore you you find dinadayal upadhyay who is a precursor to the present day bjp and people with a lot of left leaning ideas like maulana azad have all come together to build a country therefore what happens is a country fundamentals are extremely good in india this is a different topic but just but still you have to understand the human character is believed to be intensely prone to corruption if it is allowed to uh, people can do whatever they like now now what happened emmanuel kant has started thinking that how to replace the religious authority if you don't replace with anything what happens is the people will become violent and people will act in a very bad manner on the other hand he want to replace it with authority of reason that is human intelligence that is reason why it appealed to the largest number of people in the world especially the intellectuals kafka nisdhiti 
Dostoevsky. He was also influenced by David Hume. About all we will be discussing in the future classes. Therefore, first thing is religious authority was there. Therefore, if you go back, you will see the divine law is prevailing. Now, when divine law is prevailing, when divine law is prevailing, everything is decided by God. Everything is decided by God. Therefore, people were accepting their fate, they were living. But over a period of time, the principles of natural law, you can see the third in the triangle. Therefore, people are demanding that why I should be confined to this particular state? Why I should be a farmer throughout my life? Is it God decides me to be a farmer and to remain here for so long in my life? That is what is the questions in age of enlightenment. And at that time, people will be replacing the religious authority with authority of reason. A very interesting one. We should ponder over this. For approximately 2000 years, though there were a lot of discussions in between, a lot of prescriptions are given by philosophers, thought process, it is Immanuel Kant has given a shape to these thought processes. This is what he calls it as categorical imperatives. Well, let us see his arguments. He argued that historical religions had all been wrong in the content of what they believed. But what happened was most of the religions always latch. Latch means the join and they say that this is the most ethical behavior. So what happens is at one set it talks about God and God giving you a giving uh, I mean deciding many things for you. It also promotes ethical behavior. Therefore what is considered ethical by a Christian of universal love at the same time, it also promotes ethical behavior. Therefore, the religion is not just God or his message. Religion is beyond that. It promotes ethical behavior. Now what happens is if you remove religion totally out of the minds of the people, what happens is you will also be removing the promotion of ethical behavior that comes with religion. Therefore, you have to replace that with something else. It was in this context that Kant's idea, for which he is perhaps most famous, is called categorical imperative. The first word appeared in Groundwork of Metaphysics of Morals. That is a book. Definitely I want you to go through Wiki Van and read these things and internalize those things. Probably you may not be able to remember everything. But this human story of eval human e evolution also followed human ethical values. You will find that there will be a correlation between human values, ethics and morals. Therefore, main religions, all main religions, if you, if you take and read, 
it will Kant's idea was testing the morality of action how do you test the morality of the action for example I will take the same example again and again so that we will definitely for example if you are going by an engine and you are going by a track and you are going to kill five people and right hand side you go and kill one person you always say that yes let me kill the one person because one person's death is better than five person's death fine good if you happen to be that one person on the track then what will you do will you say yes you come and kill me i don't think so people will say that therefore there is some kind therefore what happens is if you are talking about morality of the action please think about this action which is going to affect you and you will be the victim for example if you allow drinking and probably the tax will come and 85% of the people will go to schools colleges everything but if you are a person who is drinking and you are spoiling your health because it is freely available with tax therefore you look from the perspective of the victim so how will he like it no this was intended as a replacement for christian injunction junction for universal law so christianity is one religion one religion which has always talked about universal law law one's neighbor as you are in kant's meaning keeping in view that they had a life of their own in which they are seeking happiness and fulfillment each person deserves a justice and fair treatment in the last class i have talked about the social contract for example i am an individual man let me take that in a village there are one me or i mean one person who is a farmer who is hard working who always works hard and he produces food i belong to another 10 people who are lazy who are not bother about the world after one year there is no food in their land they come to the farmer and ask why do you give me more of your food the farmer says i worked hard so that i will have the food when there is a big rain now who will support the farmer there are 10 of us who we are stout and we are able to bulldoze him we are able to put him through all problems therefore there is some agency known as government for which i pay taxes therefore the government puts laws that how we have to share the private property probably it says said government farmer you please sell your wheat or rice some 100 rupees per bag so that everybody in fact those people who are not working if they have saved money they will pay you and then take the bag therefore there will be a social contract between people and the government so that he will have an individual liberty at the same time he is able to enjoy the fruits of his labor this is social contract but we will see all these about social contract and other areas as we progress in our thinking during the class now kant argues every one of us have rational cells and this rational cells believe that we are thinking sensibly 
it is the rule our own intelligence gives us therefore what happens is you have to think sensibly there should be a reason you think should i do this or should not i do this who are all the people who are going to be affected who are not going to be affected then based on that you take a decision immanuel kant extends it thinking about the categorical imperative into political sphere this is the most important thing which influenced the french revolutionaries most he believed that the central duty of government is to ensure liberty if you see our constitution you have three words liberty fraternity and egalitarianism liberty we will see about all the three things in the tomorrow's class and we elaborate that in fact this is borrowed from french revolution we have incorporated in our constitution therefore liberty is says that there was something terribly wrong with the ordinary definition of freedom or liberty freedom or liberty does not mean that you can do anything whatever you want you can do anything you want as long as you don't spoil the other person we are free only when we act in accordance with our own best natures and we are slaves whenever we are under the rule of our own passions and those of others suppose if you if you give rise to passions and you lose track of your things i think we should not go into that direction that's what kant argues recently in finland one of the youngest prime minister she was dancing and and some of them have photographed themselves not in the best taste of everyone now some of the women had some words written on their bodies which was heavily criticized across the world now the question is don't they have liberty to party after all they are human beings and they would like to party themselves in the party they were they were enjoying themselves and they have got their body which they got every right to do whatever they like but what happens is though they got liberty to do unfortunately they allowed their passions to rule them that is where you should know what exactly liberty is now freedom is not absence of government what is a free society if you consider the entire world the nordic countries are supposed to be the best a free society is an one that allows people more and more opportunity to do whatever they happen to better themselves no it is the one that helps everyone become more reasonable i will read this sentence again so that you will you will understand kant's philosophy it is the one that helps everyone to become more reasonable i am a rich man good for example jeff bezos is the richest man in the world one of the richest men he got 170 billion dollars and he would like to reach moon he pays no tax in united states is it reasonable a man with 170 billion dollar worth of estate pays no tax and resists any attempt of unionization of his workers because he pays 
a very low hourly wages now on the other hand warren buffet he would like to share his riches now if you are capable of making money go ahead and make money but what happens is whatever money you make you share with the more unfortunate brother brother in the society the good state represents the rational element in us all it rules according to universally valid will under which everyone can be free so that government ident ideally is externalized institutionalized version of the best part of ourselves if you read these words what happens is it is externalized my best part only has to be externalized that should become an institution it might be bit surprising at first to discover that 191793 can't also publish major work on beauty and art you will find that most of the french revolution or french revolution you will find lot of arts the enlightenment itself was based on arts and on songs dramas so he wrote a book known as critic of judgment it might seems like a bit of sideline for a thinker and who is on politics and ethics but he has told that beauty is the cornerstone of his entire philosophy now kant kant thought that life involved constant struggle between our better selves and our passions between duty and pleasure for constantly we are thinking our better selves and our passions so i like this i like that these are all the passions but constantly you know better selves therefore these thoughts gave rise to french revolution and it changed history which we are going to see soon so carefully look at this photograph probably you remember these people in their photographs in fact i have shown immanuel kant and various philosophers photographs so that you will really understand them better this person is a 20th century philosopher and his name is rawls john bodley rawls he is he was an american american moral legal and political philosopher in the liberal tradition he received shocks prize for logic and philosophy and national humanities medal in 1999 and later presented by president bill clinton in recognition of how raw work revived the discipline of political and ethical philosophy with his arguments that society in which the most fortunate help the least fortunate is not only a moral society but a logical one this is very important for example i am earning x amount and i pay a tax of 10% of my tax and i should be very happy to pay the tax because this 10% is going to the students who are unable to get into the schools there is a big debate on what are freebies and good freebies and bad freebies should government really give the freebies in fact rawl clearly says that it is a moral society will definitely share we will see a complete lecture on inequalities in our country and when you actually see that it is your moral and logical duty 
to ensure that whatever money you contribute goes to the people who are the poorest. Therefore, John Broadley Rao has given a lot of, he's a philosopher. He influenced the thinking process. What happens is in 18th, 19th and early 20th century, people were going away from religion, going away from everything, and they started behaving in a very odd manner. We will see what sociologists, Rukim and others, have observed in the society and provided some sociological solutions for this as we discuss this. A Theory of Justice is the book written by him on political philosophy by John Rawls, in which the author attempts to provide a moral theory, altern theoretical alternative to utilitarianism and address the problem of distributive justice. What is distributive justice? 60 persons who can be fit into a bus in United States have made 70% of the money during the COVID. The richest persons are the people who made the maximum money. On the other hand, there is a large number of percentage of poor Americans. 50% of them, they have not even increased their incomes beyond 3%. Therefore, what happens is the inequalities, the, the COVID has affected the rich countries. Of course, they are affected. But the poorer countries are affected the most. Therefore, and the poor are affected the most. Therefore, what government has to do? Government has distributed two lakh trillion, I mean two trillion dollars as freebies, if you can call that. It is not freebie. It is the money that is needed to make the economy survive and people survive. So it is distributed to the people. And this is what is distributive justice means. And this theory is used an updated form of Kantian philosophy and variation from social contract theory, which to a large extent is based on utilitarian theory. Therefore, Raoul thinks that the justice cannot be done if you leave these people who are unfortunate. And it is not based on religion. For example, in Christianity or even in Hinduism, you have Daridra Narayana Seva. Therefore, people who are poor has to be given food. And same case with in Christianity, the poorer sections of the society are given arms. Church feeds them because they are also sons of the God. Is yes, it is not based on divine law, it is based on Kantian reason. Now, arguments of Raoul. Raoul argues that liberty and equality are the basic structures of well-ordered society. For example, why certain societies are well-ordered, like Nordic societies like Sweden, Finland, and others, they always innovate things. It is primarily because they're balanced between liberty and the equality. While well, United States of America never balanced that. Though it was it was a principle which 
Obama, President Obama, has give, articulated in his various talks and his book. But still there is something which is, which is not really uh, been given, given to and this was inspired by David Hume about which we will see tomorrow. Therefore what you have to do is you give liberty to the people to make as much as money as possible but at the same time you ensure equality of opportunity. Therefore, principles of justice, here we are coming from, there we started with liberty, freedom, and slowly we are coming into principles of justice. Therefore, what should guide the people is, is it morality or the justice? For example, you know, there is scarcity of goods and services, we know. Some can say, I'm a, I'm a computer scientist and I could really, 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 really do a lot of things. But I may not be altruistic. Altru altruism means you try to give money to the people. Oh, purely egoistic. No. I earn this money because of my merit. Somebody like... Elon Musk says that I got this money by my merit, therefore I don't give it to the poorer people. They have not worked hard, they are lazy. That is not so. They lack the opportunity. They have ends which they seek to advance, but prefer to advance them through cooperative with others or mutually acceptable terms. This is very important. It is not enough Elon Musk accumulates money, but you should accumulate by having a cooperation with others. Rawls offers a model of fair choice situation. There are two very important philosophical constructs. One is known as original position with wheel of ignorance. If time permits, I will dis definitely discuss with original position and wheel of ignorance and, uh, and parties would hypothetically choose mutually acceptable principle of justice. Under such constraints, Rawl believes that parties would find his favored principle of justice to be especially attractive winning out over varied alternatives including utilitarian and the right-wing libertarian accounts. See, what is right-wing and left-wing? What happened during French Revolution? There are three set of people, king, the clergy and the peasants. Each one having equal votes, while the presents are approximately 98%, therefore the kings and clergy join together, they can overrule the peasants. So there was a big revolution, in fact, they came to the king, told that we don't accept these things of tax proposals given by you, uh, therefore we want vote based on what we are having. At that time, he made all the people to sit in different blocks. And on his left side, the peasants' representatives were there. And on the right, you have the supporters of the king. They are the right wing. That is how the left and right wing have come into existence, about which we will see in future classes. Therefore, raw arguments is basically on justice, liberty, and equality. Again, these things are extensively dealt by judges in Supreme Court and others. Now, we will come to what exactly our 
Justice Nageshwar Rao sir has used the word commutarian approach. What is commutarian? Commutarian is the idea that human identities are largely shaped by different kind of constitutive communities. For example, the human identity of K. Prabhakar is shaped by, by me, is shaped by the people around me. And this conception of human nature should inform our moral and political judgments as well as policies and institutions. We live like lions, we live in large community. We are not an individual tiger uh, who live almost, you know, one in the tigers. Generally, you don't find tigers, large number of tigers going around. On the other hand, you will find the wolves go in a pack. Therefore, these communities shape and ought to shape our moral and political judgments. Therefore, the moral judgment of tiger is different from moral judgment of a lion. Same case with human beings. Therefore, those communities shape and ought to shape our moral and political judgments, and we have a strong obligation to support and nourish the communities that provide meaning for our life, without which we would be disoriented. This is exactly is the communitarian approach, which is also known as communitarianism. For communitarianism is a philosophy that emphasizes the connection between the individual and the community. Community means, don't get me wrong, it is not the caste. Community means the group of people within which we work. It is overriding philosophy is based upon the belief that a person's social identity and personality is largely molded by community relationships with similar degree of development being based on individualism. For example, in a country like America, there is a large amount of emphasis on individual. In a country like India, there is a case of individualism, but you also have something like a group of people with whom you live. The community might be a family, your own family, Communitary, communitarianism usually is understood in the wider philosophical sense as a collection of interactions. That's what, what is collection of interactions? In morning till night, I will be having a lot of interaction with the people. This collection is called communitarian approach. Therefore, I may not like to get vaccinated. I may not like to get vaccinated. But I wish to get vaccinated because I don't spread the disease. This is what is communitarian approach to health. Now, communitarianism usually opposes extreme individualism and rejects laissez-faire policies. Laissez-faire policies means you just do anything, get, make money, and then increase your wealth. A stability of the overall community is important for communitarianism approach. This is very, very important. This is what Supreme Court and this is what our constitution says. It is not the individual who rules a society. It is a communitarian approach. Now, while the term was coined only in the mid-19th century, ideas that were communitarian in nature appeared much earlier. They were found in some of the classical socialist doctrine about early commune and about workers' solidarity. And even in New Testament, I have some of the, some of the references to communitarianism and monasticism. which we will definitely see. These are all the definitions you have to write in a separate book. Probably I will share the book I have written 
in my handwriting so that you will know how to prepare a lexicographic lexicography means writing a dictionary your own dictionary you write and that dictionary you name it there is an examination dictionary for you no jemming shaft and jalan shaft for most of the philosophy when you are reading these two german words are very famous for example german shaft it is known as oppressive but nurturing communities for example you go to china it is highly oppressive but at the same time it is nurturing for example it says individual has no rights you have to do this you stay jack ma you are very great but suddenly one point of a time jack ma was told your time is up and uh, you better do something for the society therefore it is oppressive and nurturing communities and jishil shaft liberating but impersonal societies if you take country like united states you will have jishil shaft it is liberating so liber liberty you will see that liberty in statue in new york it says that liberty the individual is very important and the society is impersonal therefore you allow the people like jeff bezos everybody to make tons of money and they are they are supposed to use their money for any purpose including including going to moon going to mars all these things now many sociologists warned of the dangers of anomy normlessness for example what happens a person from india after completing his graduation he may get to united states once he goes to united states you know uh, uh and then he goes to europe then he goes to many 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 countries and over a period of time you will find that he gained his liberty but he loses his social mooring he becomes an anomie tried the word was coined by drukim a sociologist for modern sociologists saw the rise of mass society this mass society has no communal bonds and respect for traditional values and authority in the united states of the 1960s what has happened by the finnish prime minister dancing in our own official home with a group of people like youngsters is something like a mass society with no communal bonds and respect for traditional values therefore robert nisbet to light of authority habits of the heart these are all the lost city these are all the books that emphasize the need for bridging the social capital so what happens is you need to have this social capital which will help you to survive in future but if you make the social squander the social capital and say that i am an individual i can do anything i like i think that is some area we need to overcome let us see jamin chap and jessel shaft you will find this word quite frequently in sociology amita yatsoyani he is the person who he said he studied various organizations and he came out with uh, his theory in fact not his theory it is, it is empirically he established who he told the it has two characteristics commutarian approach a web of affect laden relationship among group of individuals relationship that often criss cross and reinforce one another and a measure of commitment to set of shared values norms and meanings and shared history and identity that is you know you will find when you go into a tcs or big organizations they will always say 
this is our shared value this is our norms this is our meanings this is our shared history in order to provide an identity but it does not mean that you know you call some person as i uh, as uh, if infosian but what is the meaning of that infosian just because you complete a course and then join in a company you become an infosian is it your identity may not be what exactly is the identity of the person and what is the shared values of the person to earn appreciation community it seems to me groups must be able to extend moral suasion and extract a measure of compliance from their members therefore moral suasion means the communities will say that don't do this if you do this you are you are you may be the loss and at the same time they coerce the people for compilation for example this what exactly happens in vaccination you get vaccinated you try to serve, you you don't spread it it will be better in united states large number of people did not get vaccinated and they could not really enforce vaccination protocol on people in fact many of the places they gave an incentive of giving a bottle of i mean a glass of beer if a person gets vaccinated there were a lot of incentives for vaccination but still there are some set of people who refused vaccination therefore but what happens is if you part of a community what will do is you have every obligation to do that on the other hand in the present case the supreme court judge examined the commutarian approach and at the same time told that there is no scientific evidence to say that the man who is not vaccinated uh, who is not vaccinated is likely to spread the disease more therefore he got every right to refuse and if you look at the four different focuses economic focus cultural focus on community economic focus on individual cultural focus on individual you will find individualism leftism rightism and something on opposite of individualism commutinearism i wish you discuss within yourself how exactly this has influenced the thinking of the people if you are leftist and a marxist you think that profit is a legal robbery or on the other hand you are a liberal per right liberalist you say that you got every right to earn money and you will be the you go for rightism and on the other hand individualism is something says that importance of individual or you have opposite to that commutarianism you look at the figure and then write down leftism what is rightism individualism and communitarianism and you try to say which one is most suitable for a country like india which is diverse economically culturally by various areas please do give your ideas give your thoughts in the in the be, uh, below man you know and your comments and i will be very happy to answer your questions please do question and by questioning you will become more ethical thank you very much we will see in tomorrow's class